What's up everyone? So today's video we are going to be doing I guess part three of the Jetta resurrection rebuild whatever we're calling it at this point, but um, It's been a bit of a nightmare um, How do I explain that there were some issues that went on with it the car is now running But some of the stuff that went on with it was uh, we were chasing down like there was three sensor issues and they were coming up um, that the three sensors were having a problem. So I assumed there was something going on with the wiring harness because there was a bunch of clips broken and just a lot of hack job stuff. And what ended up happening was I was testing out the wires, um, metering them, tracing them through the harness, expecting something to be broken, whatnot, whatever. Um, long story short, those three sensors had a common ground wire. It was a black with a red stripe. So after going through it over and over again and tracing them all the way back to the computer, um, I was getting good continuity. I tested the sensors and those seemed to be okay. Um, on a last ditch effort, what I ended up doing was I was assuming maybe a fuse was blown. Um, probably should have checked that first and now I know, but I'll recommend that to you guys first. Always check your fuses first. I just assumed because it was a newer car, um, I really didn't think there was going to be any issues with that. But what happened was I went through all the fuses, every single fuse was good. and. Um, I checked them all and there's a lot of spare spots on fuse boxes but I'll let you guys know this um, there's a lot of spare spots but where there's supposed to be a fuse you'll see two contact points so they'll see a little bit of a steel part and another steel part which I'll show you in a second and um, that's where a fuse is actually supposed to go so I noticed that there was one spot where I saw two contacts but no fuse sure enough I borrowed a fuse from another spot started right up now it was already running before but started up zero check engine lights so after spending a few hours trying to chase down some issues it ended up just being a stupid fuse whatever anyways it works now I'm happy um, let's get into today's video on what we're gonna be finishing up and wrapping up on the car so I'll show you that now before we move on since we're on the subject of fuses this is what I mean so you can tell if a fuse is supposed to be somewhere if you look here you'll see one contact but if I pull out one of these fuses see how there's two contacts one and one that means there's supposed to be fuse there, but if you don't see any contacts, like any of these spots, uh, generally that means that there's not supposed to be something there, but if you see two contacts, like such, a fuse should be there. So that's what I ended up finding. It was one of these ones over here that was missing that, that caused us all the headaches. So um, Now I'll go on to the other stuff. So you can see here, we this is where the battery's supposed to go. There's actually a battery tray that was missing when I purchased the vehicle. So I bought some stuff, and I'll get into that now. So we have a battery tray to go where um, there was one missing. Pick that up for about 20 bucks, good deal, because they're about 60 or something like that from the dealership. I also had to get a brand new battery. Um, this is just some cheap one because we're trying to do this on a budget because I don't want to spend too much money on this car. A Econo Craft, it's like some $70 battery from AutoZone, but uh, it should last long enough at least. And then I have hood latch cables. For some reason, these guys cut the cables, lost the cables, did something with the cables. And the hood latch cable on these cars are two pieces. So there's uh, this piece, this piece, and then there's this little doohickey bracket thing that connects the two so that you can uh, connect this little ball socket thing. They got this ball and socket type ordeal that has to go in this little doohickey in the middle. So we got that, and this was a big deal, guys. I had ended up getting a condenser. Um, I guess I'll slide it out of the box for you guys. So I had to get a condenser. And I'll get into why I had to get it. So this is a used condenser. Um, I got super lucky on this thing because as of the you know time of making this video, this car since it's so new, a 2016, and it's the 1.4 liter, which is a fairly new engine for Volkswagen, they don't have um, aftermarket condensers. So this actually was from a body shop who uh, did an insurance repair on this. And insurance says super picky, so the only reason they replaced this was because of this little dent here in the bottom, and that's not even a, a portion that carries fluid, only this core is. So just this little tiny dent, he said it doesn't leak, anything like that, but um, I already kind of know it doesn't. If you follow it back here, that doesn't actually carry any fluid, this bottom one, only these cores do. So anyways, this thing was like 400 bucks to buy new, I got it for 45 bucks, and the reason why I had to replace it is somebody went ahead and I hope you guys can see this. Yeah, so there is a condenser in there, but it's the wrong one for this engine. It fits a 2.5 liter. I'm assuming they went ahead and bought it, thought it was gonna work, and you can see that the AC lines right here are just hanging because they don't fit in. It's a different bracket system. Um, if I pull this out, you guys can probably see it. 
see how this has this flat face here? That's what those style of um, AC lines connect to. So you have this flat face and that's where the ceiling surface is. If you look at this one, it's just a big gaping hole uh, and it seals in the back, which if you try to plug or connect those two lines, they don't work. So I got to rip out. Um, I'm going to try to do this as painlessly as possible, but I have to get out, probably take out the radiator fans, the radiator and uh, to get to the condenser. Condenser actually bolts to the radiator. You can see here with these four bolts. So I'm gonna try to minimize the workload as much as possible to get this done. But then uh, the AC system should be uh, good to go. Only one concern is they bent the living crap out of all this stuff here and kind of kinked this rubber hose a little bit. I think once I, I'm gonna have to gently bend this back into position because this is supposed to be way down there and this is supposed to be down there as well and this is supposed to be down here with this loop sitting lower than the hood line because right now this stupid loop is sitting way up there like you guys can see so that's what we got going on um i think that's pretty much it as far as uh, mechanical stuff once we get all that i did have just distilled water in here it's got a hint of uh of antifreeze you guys can see but i think i'm probably since there's so much crud in there i'm probably going to dump that put distilled and then i do have volkswagen uh approved coolant that i'm going to throw in here just so everything is done correctly and right since they're very picky on their coolant on these vehicles but that's most of it um i am waiting for seat belts to come back i'm getting them rebuilt so i do have to get that stuff in order to be 100 percent ready and um, one more thing, we're probably going to be, you guys are going to laugh because, I mean, it's just a Jetta, but we're probably going to be doing something fun if I can get around to it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to cover it in this video or in the next video, but um, my previous Jetta, I'm actually uh, giving it to my old man. He wants it because it's a diesel and yada yada. It's good on fuel and he wants it. So I'm going to go ahead and give that to him, but it has lowering suspension. It has Eibach sport line springs and um, he doesn't want a lowered car. So along with that, he just wants regular tires, nothing like that. So I'm thinking of swapping that stuff out. It does fit on this Jetta. Um, so I was gonna swap the springs, swap the wheels, because right now on this car, we only have just these hubcaps here. So hubcaps, and it's at stock ride height, which doesn't look the best. I mean, it's, not, it's just a Jetta. It's not gonna be anything performance, but here, I'll show you what we're gonna put on. So you guys can get a general idea of what this thing will look like. So here's my diesel Jetta. MK5 2006 and it has these wheels on it 18 inch wheels and it has the iBox sport lines so it sits a lot nicer I think at least you guys can let me know what you guys think in the comments below but we're gonna go ahead probably and hopefully swap that suspension I'm just hoping those bolts are gonna come out because I haven't touched that thing in a few years so that's the plan so I'm not gonna waste any time getting right into this I'm gonna rip off this air box stuff um, and then we will probably take off the radiator fans is going to be next and see if we can't wiggle this out without too much effort. So that's the plan. Let's get into it. So if I'm lucky, and I'm hoping I'm lucky, Volkswagen may have done me a huge favor. They actually do have holes to remove <clears throat> the condenser from the front side. So I might be lucky enough that if I remove these bolts from the front and then just dislodge the radiator from the back side, I might be able to shift it enough to get this condenser at the front because it looks like there's a big enough opening for sure to get it out. I might just have to play with it because the brackets uh, sit past this body here, but we might be able to get this done fairly easily um, outside of just taking off this rebar, but that's only, only eight bolts, it's nothing crazy. So let's see if we can't get that done. So it looks like I have to take off this bracket because there's a hole behind it um, for this. So I'll remove this and let's get wrenching. Okay, so I am so thankful 
Um, Volkswagen, like I said, they did a huge favor for us, and uh, I didn't even have to take the rebar or any of that stuff out. It just uh, slipped um, out of there. I had to dislodge the radiator just to pull it back, like I was saying. So <clears throat> um, there's a screw here, and it's supposed to be here. I'm still waiting on a few more parts, but there's a, a little bracket that you can probably see holds the radiator in place. And uh, yeah, it just dropped out of there. I tucked it in this way, tucked it out, and then just dropped it straight down, and it fell at the bottom. And I can hopefully do the same thing with this one. So that's gonna save me a ton of time. So I'm very happy that that went that way. Um, I don't have to mess with any of that other stuff, and we can just continue. So let's get that new one in there and get rocking. a bunch of wrestling and bending these AC lines back into place and I don't really have another vehicle to reference right in front of me but um, they're a little bit out of place I'm not gonna say they're perfect but at least they're not rubbing or touching on anything and um, this is now gonna be sitting below the hood line so the kink is gone out of it and this thing has just been bent so out of proportion and uh, I think you guys can probably agree with me that we don't want to bend these too much, otherwise we'll probably be buying new ones. And I looked, and this thing's like three or five hundred bucks for this really long one that goes all the way back to the fireball. So I really don't want to be messing with it too much to be buying one. So I've gotten it close. It's going to sit below the headlight. It's going to clear the hood, and importantly, it uh, connects up to here nice. And they wrap around here. They're not going to be dragging, doing anything funny. And like I said, everything is going to be clearing the fan. So no issues there. Tighten everything up and start buttoning it back together. I did have to take this headlight out just to be able to get these AC lines below the headlight line, which is where they're supposed to be, because the headlight goes through here, and you can see this kind of somewhat original shape that's supposed to keep it below the headlight and kind of along that frame line there. I do think, I'm not too sure, but if I had to assume, I would say that this is supposed to tuck into there, um, but this thing is so bent out of shape that um, I don't want to be trying to bend it too much to get it back in there. So this is going to be close enough to where it's supposed to be um, with it not touching anything but also without compromising potentially um, spraying a leak if we start bending those things too much so anyways get everything tightened back up and we'll uh, continue before I put the rest of the front end on I do have to put the hood latch in and the hood latch cable like I was mentioning earlier is cut so here's the original one somebody decided to cut it or chop it or do something fun with it so I do have to take that out. It runs through the inner frame. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it doesn't run through the, the fender well here. It runs through the inner frame, ends up in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I don't want to remove the whole hood cowl, so it's probably not going to be able to see as much as, uh, as you'd hope, but you can probably see that little grommet there. It just slips through that, so I don't have to remove that grommet, but I do just have to slip it out of there. I've already disconnected it from the latch inside. That was another fun part. But I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing out like so. Ball on the end gets stuck in the boot, but... Okay, so that's out. And then... It has the grommet here that just pops in through there. Into this inner fender like I was mentioning you guys. So once you're shoving it through there, you're going to want to end up with your cable obviously close to the latch and um, it's not too difficult getting this handle off is the hardest part so this handle you can see this little latch here you have to lift this up in order to get this off so you kind of just have to get the handle in a situation where you can use a little screwdriver or something like this and pry this little latch out because that's the mechanism that holds this thing in place is this little latch in the corner here Otherwise, you'll be fighting with it, trying to get it out of the, out of there. So, we'll put this little ball in here, flip this around, drop our cable in. So we now have a hood latch cable, and I can put the some of this uh, interior paneling on. Still got to tackle some other stuff, so I'm not gonna completely assemble it, but I'll at least get the latch on here so we can do that. So let me throw that latch on, and we'll continue. Here's the other part of the hood latch cable. So like I said, there's this little connecting block. This thing is $12 if you guys can believe that, but where else are you going to buy this stupid thing? And then the other cable. 
So all together, all this stuff's like 40 bucks just to get all this. I should be able to reach over there. Now I just gotta figure out where this is supposed to be routed. I'm guessing it goes over top of the headlight, would be my presumption. So the mystery of where that little connecting block goes is solved. It goes right here on this headlight support. So that's gonna click in here into those two little slots. So that sits there like that. And now the cable just about reaches there. We just gotta route it through here. So the routing's complete. We got the clip there, it runs through here. Hopefully you guys can see it runs through there. And then it clips in along here. And then we have this there. We also have a sensor for the hood latch in case your hood isn't fully engaged. But we're gonna go ahead and connect the latch to the cable. And we drop this in, put our bolts in here, and button it up. We now have a working hood latch. So we're definitely gonna have to align the hood properly, but it latches at least, so it's not gonna go flying. Um, again, like I was saying before, we're gonna get a body guy to actually realign the stuff, paint up the stuff that needs to be painted. Um, this is just, uh, I'm not a body guy, I don't claim to be, so we'll get somebody to get her all dialed in, but for now at least we got a hood that latches. <clears throat> and this opens, I had to take this apart again, just to kinda get it dialed in, but everything works. We got a hood latch. So let's throw the front clip back on and uh, continue. Front end is now on and I'm gonna go ahead and install this battery tray in there. And um, at the same time, I'm also gonna put the intake back on too. spending way too much time on this today you guys um, it's looking great but I ended up going through the whole hassle of <clears throat> swapping out the wheels from the uh, 2006 one swapped out the wheels swapped out the suspension so we put the regular ones there I'm missing one hubcap because that car didn't come with one hubcap so we got three on there um, like I said this car is going to my old man oh. he wants it for just a, a daily driver and uh, yeah, I guess he just wants it stock ride height, stock suspension, and regular wheels. He doesn't want uh, to have a rough ride and all that stuff. But look at how good this thing is looking, guys. Uh, so this has Eibach Sport lines on it, and it has the 18-inch uh, GTI wheels, older GTI wheels. But look at how good that looks. Like, the, the hood's not closed right now, but, I mean, this thing is looking pretty fresh. I mean, obviously, it's a Jetta, so you can't get too excited about it. But for what it is, guys, and what I paid for it... I am really liking the way it's coming out. So this is what that looks like. Unfortunately, the diesel's not looking uh, as pretty or fly as it was, but this thing is looking real good. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with the wheels, but um, I think kind of the chrome, all that chrome stuff that it's got going on in the front there, along with the, I guess the aluminum, it's not chrome wheels, but aluminum wheels, it's kind of, uh, kind of complementing each other nice. So pending stuff on this, waiting for the seatbelt to come back. I do need to go get a windshield because the windshield is cracked here. What happened was when the original accident happened, this hood I'm assuming drove into here because there's kind of a, a punch mark there. So, and then we do at some point need to get somebody that's more familiar with bodywork to repair some of the bodywork that's chipped or damaged and line everything up at some point. But I think this is pretty decent for now, guys. Like I'm not trying to make this a showpiece. I'm just trying to make it look look decent and uh, presentable and just be a, a commuter car that I can save on fuel. So yeah, seat belts and uh, we should be rocking and rolling here. I do have to switch and put uh, actual antifreeze in it because right now it's just got distilled water in it because I was just testing things and I didn't want to run through uh, through the really expensive Volkswagen um, antifreeze because they call for some really fancy stuff and it's really expensive. But anyways guys, uh, I think feel like I'm rambling on. I am exhausted. I'm going to hit the hit the hay, but if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up any questions about this uh this build if we want to call it a build but this repair of this car um ask me a question in the comments below follow us on instagram same spelling at boost motorsports but wherever you guys want to follow along it's cool with me thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next video take care